Hi team! It's been a while since we've made a video to update you on our worm bins, and so we thought we'd bring you up to speed today. Well, the TLDR is that they're all dead. But before we talk about them all being dead, maybe let's talk a little bit about how we made them all dead. So, in our last video, uh, we just finished our final feeding for our second worm bin. And uh, after, I think it was about two weeks, we realized that there was enough matter inside that second bin and that uh, it was probably time to add our third bin. So with this third bin, similarly to the second bin, we had some holes drilled in the bottom and they were the same size. It was about an eighth inch. Uh, this is, was to allow the worms to migrate up from the second bucket into the third bucket and to allow water uh, to fall from the third bucket into the second bucket and then eventually down into the first bucket. With this third bin, uh, we started off by putting a really generous layer of shredded cardboard as bedding. Uh, we did this to kind of absorb some of the moisture that would be in the, the ground up uh, organic matter that we put in there. For this third bucket, we took, I think, what was probably about two weeks worth of our compost, we put it into our blender with a whole bunch of water, and we blended it until it was almost a puree. From there, uh, we just poured it directly on top of the bedding, and then we put a, another pretty generous layer of shredded cardboard bedding on the top of that blended up matter as well. After we put all the pieces together, we put it back in its spot and we left it for a week. So after a week, we took the lid off and immediately knew something was not right. It smelled so bad so much worse than any of the other smells that have come out of it in the past. In the past there was a little bit of smell, it, it, it wasn't anything terrible. But this smell made me gag. Looking around, we noticed some dead worms outside of the buckets. This was also another first for us. We dug around and noticed that there were no worms in this top bucket either. So we moved it all to the bathtub and lifted up the third bucket and plastered along the side of that third bucket were worms that had been crushed, I guess, and died stuck between the two buckets as they tried to find a, a way to food, I suppose. What's more is that in the, the water catching bucket on the bottom, there were also an awful lot of dead and equally smelly worm. And to cap off the whole thing, the middle bucket that had been so alive with worms and decomposed compost, there were no living worms there either. They were all dead. We quickly came to terms with the fact that this was not a salvageable situation. Uh, inside of our apartment, there was nothing we were going to be able to do. We'd probably need a deck, a hose, so much bleach, and so we ended up discarding the whole lot. Needless to say, this has been a bit of a learning opportunity. So what do we think went wrong? First off, we didn't check on the worms for a week. After making such a big change to their environment, we really should have checked on them after a day or two, and maybe we could have avoided this whole situation by reacting to how they were behaving. We also think that we might have been able to improve the situation by drilling slightly bigger holes in this top bucket so that the worms had more space to migrate up to it. Additionally, the bedding that was in the third bucket could have maybe been too dense and matted down too much so that the worms couldn't actually get up through and into that new food source. And so where do we go from here? We are definitely going to re-begin a worm bucket in the future, and when we do, we'll bring you along for that adventure too. But for now, thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you next time.